Welcome back. Our next guest is a highly acclaimed chef and restaurateur who knows how to please even the pickiest little eaters. He's here with a spread from his new cookbook, Just in Time for Father's Day. Please welcome the co-author of Dad in the Kitchen, celebrity, celebrity chef Corey Vitiello. Celebrity. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so the cookbook has been described as for dads by dads. So what makes it father so, friendly? Let's say for dads is a bit of a, it's a bit of a stretch. This is a real family cookbook by dads, yes. Myself, my partner, uh, Chris Johns, who wrote this together. But it's really about empowering dads to get into the kitchen. But it's about cooking with family, making memories, and just putting the love into the food at home that and really just enjoying the process. So. Oh my God, Cute. I cannot get over the cuteness. Oh this God. is- Oh, we got Barlow up there. That That's, was Barlow. Barlow's um, almost five. Your son who's five, and uh, that is your son with your partner, who I think a lot of people would know, uh, wait, Martina, but we would maybe know her as Dragonette. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Barlow, we need to know, is Barlow a picky eater, or have you managed as a chef to just explore the palates of the world? That mm -hmm. is, is tough. It changed everybody <laughs> with children or, you know, Picky siblings knows that it changes day to day. One day he eats everything from, you know, greenery and kale salads and everything you see up here, and the next day it's just chicken nuggets, French fries, and <laughs> as much as we try to put new fresh foods in front of him, and I think that's the key. It's being able to identify, oh, that's a zucchini, right? And that's an eggplant at the grocery store. And then when he's at home and he sees these things prepared in his meal, he's able to be like, oh, right, I know what that is. Nice. I'm going to try it. I love so that. Just, Okay, well, the food looks delicious by anyone's standards. So uh, let's start with dessert, since most kids like would be delighted if you started the meal with that. Well, um, this is a rhubarb custard pie. I would th think that the tartness of the rhubarb might be something that's off-putting for kids, but am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. I think it's, it's <laughs> definitely an adjustment, but you know, this one's, it's so balanced. There's enough sugar in here and rhubarb. You want that tartness. That's what gives it that unique flavor. And I, I don't necessarily remember liking rhubarb when I was younger. To be honest, I don't even know if Barlow likes it. He, <laughs> what he likes is the pastry and the custard, and yeah. maybe he's not even realizing that's rhubarb. Am I eating too soon? Things. You no. might be. No, you there's, might no, be. There's, no, there's no rules here. Yeah. But beyond no, before no... the tasting of it, e anyway, it's something you can actually do with the kids, right? And it's easy to make with the kids. So walk us through how exactly, it comes together. Exactly, That's such uh, an important part of our day is just being able to cook with the kids. So when he was young, we got him into the kitchen when he was, you know, even from one, picking herbs, grating cheese, now he has his little knife. Oh, I Whatever love these that. little tasks he can get his hands on, it makes my day so much more enjoyable just yeah. having him beside me. And it's a mess, and sometimes it's a total pain. But <laughs> in the end, was it, the cleaning is it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster. So, what's in there, Corey? So, this oh, is, this is so okay, good. so this recipe is every mother, grandmother has this recipe, at least both of mine do. It's rhubarb custard tart. So, this is mm -hmm. four ingredients rhubarb, a little bit of flour. A lot of nutmeg, that gives it that really unique taste. Mm. A little bit of sugar, lemon, and some salt. I think I'm up to like eight ingredients, but <laughs> oh, it's who's so counting, good. but it's easy. Mm. You mix it together. Now, what I love about this tart is it's a freeform galette style. So in the book, it's a traditional tart, but the way I make all my pastry at home, I roll out the sheet, I take the filling, and what I love about this style is it's just rustic and beautiful, and however it comes out of the oven, it's, it's just perfect in its own. I'm a firm believer in food to just look like it naturally fell on the plate that way, and this mm. is a great example of that. So this you can do with apple tarts, frangipan, mm -hmm. blueberry. You need a, a bit of a, a denser filling to hold it, but it's really simple. You just start folding, mm -hmm. fold, 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 and it looks like it's gonna be totally encased, but as this starts baking in the oven, and we're gonna, you know, we'd glaze it with egg wash, so this is very rustic, and this is the point of it. But when this I starts like baking rustic. in the oven, it's going to spread out and end like, like this one and kind of really open up in that Beautiful. pastry. The butter's going to melt down. It'll really uh, just crown oof. the tart. Oh, it's gorgeous. It makes gorgeous. a great presentation. I like the look of that. I do yeah, too. Yeah, it's Love nice it. and rustic, and it's easy. And it's sweet, gorgeous. just a little bit of that tartness that you need. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Okay, we're going to move on to we're the next move food. On. Uh, you've brought ricotta and zucchini fritters. Uh, what are these cacio e pepe? So pockets? you know, you know what cacio. You can explain that. They're the classic <laughs> Roman yes. pasta with pecorino cheese and campot peppercorns. Uh, so these ones are a dumpling take on that, a fritter take on that. So the zucchini. We grate, we salt, we squeeze out the excess moisture, mix it with a lot of ricotta cheese, mm. a little bit of flour, some egg, and a lot of pecorino. And then we're just dropping them into hot oil, fry them up. Oh, and the they're key, so good. They're good. Really but, good. Oh, oh, imagine that when they're just out of the fryer, oh, crispy. It doesn't matter. 
pillows. This would be so mm. great like, at a dinner addictive. party too, like just to have them out. They're amazing. And the so what makes actually this batter is really interesting. There's another batter in the book, the same batter. It's a sweet version of it. It's an orange and ricotta donut with cinnamon sugar. Okay. Same batter. Switch zucchini for a little more sugar and cinnamon. Oh, I always that. thought you could order this at restaurants. I never imagined you could make it at home, so oh. I'm really excited. But speaking of restaurants, you own, you own a chain of restaurants called Flock, a Flock rotisserie. So um, we're so excited that you brought us a roast chicken today since it's your specialty. Why are you so into chicken? I, I think, I personally think chicken is one of the most you know, quintessential home cooked meals you can make. A beautiful, Roast chicken, it's so oh. seductive coming into the oven, fully browned, a lot of riz. I think I don't even know if I'm using that term. <laughs> I don't think I'm using that properly. But this is like a chicken in a thong Excellent. Yeah. Um, I, I was listening back there. I wasn't, I wasn't doing this. Uh, so, you know, fully browned out of the oven, this is something that you can't do in restaurants. It takes no. love and it takes patience. And, you know, this is what's great about cooking at home is you get to enjoy the process. And that's, you know, the beautiful sliced potatoes in the bottom with some pancetta and the herbs and the lemon and the potatoes cook at the same time as the chicken and it all browns and the mm -hmm. fats drip down and the potatoes and the herbs. But when you pull that out, mm. you can't replicate that in a restaurant. Yeah. This is yeah. really only suited for home cooking and that's what we tried to drive home in the book. This the is potato is so good. You can't do in restaurants. No. Yeah. You can only do that at home. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, and then, then the smells that you embed into your kids and your family's yes. memories is so good. Your final dish is a, a roasted eggplant and halloumi salad. This seems like it's gonna be a hard sell for kids. I don't even know if my son has ever even had eggplant. <laughs> so uh, how do I you know, make him love it, fall in love with this? So, see, th this is what I was talking about, getting your kid accustomed to identifying vegetables in the grocery store, in the market, pick up a banana pepper, pick up an eggplant. I mean, these are daunting things for anybody. I don't think mm. I enjoyed these things until well into my teens. But what really gives the, this dish the hook for kids is the fried halloumi cheese. So mm. crispy, molten, interior fried cheese. And this is really indicative of how we eat at home, healthy Mediterranean flavors, kind of very extemporaneous, off the cuff cooking. This, is, this dish was born out of what we had in our fridge. Mm. And what I love about this dish is the green tahini dressing on top. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this isn't a winner for all kids, let's be honest. It's mm -hmm. eggplant, it's peppers, there's a lot of spice Baby in steps. It. Baby steps. Baby steps, right? with yep. the Start with the cheese, work in an eggplant, slide in a chili. Love it, I love it. Stunning. Um, Corey, I wish we had so much time, but this has been phenomenal. Thank you for bringing Thank these you. amazing dishes. Thank you, everybody. We want to wish you a happy Father's Day. Thank you very this much. Week. All the, dads. All the fathers. fathers and father figures have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to remind everyone that Dad in the Kitchen is available now. And studio audience, you're all going home with the car. Yeah. And the new car. Everybody gets a car. Everybody. Oh, man, happy cooking. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.